All right, guys. So as promised, here we are. Uh, the final tour of the uh, rig. I promised this when I would get one of these. Now look at that. Thank you guys very, very much for that. That was very, uh, very kind of you for your support. And so I haven't even opened it up myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up right quick. See what it does, what it looks like. Hey, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. Maybe another one down here. Of course. So, very excited. Thank you for the support again. Hang tight while I do this. <laughs> Fancy. Wow, this is cool. Very neat. I kind of opened my mouth and said I would show my truck at the when I got this to this mark, and I didn't think I would get to this mark. So again, thank you for your support. Look at that. I can't read; it's too dark. Okay. Thank you, guys. So on to the tour. Uh, this is a 2017 Dodge uh, Ram 4500. I purchased it. I actually ordered this truck. I was shopping around for a next larger size truck. I was running a 3500 Dodge and very similar boxes, similar to those, except for that I only had two boxes instead of three boxes. And I was overweight. It was just way too much for that poor little truck. It held up great. Uh, I have some build pictures of, of the boxes I made for that as well. And it was just overweight. So it got to the point where I needed more. I needed a little bit more carrying capacity, so I did some shopping. This is the closest color I could get to the same blue that I had. And I shopped around for it, and I bought it. So, <clears throat> this one has got the standard 6.7 liter. I've got a manual transmission on it. Uh, the anti-theft pedal. As you can see there, I still got my junk in it. But, it's been good. It carries the weight plenty nicely. It does a really, really good job. Um, these stainless doors, they're, I believe it's 10 gauge or 11 gauge stainless. I've always had stainless on all my trucks, on all my builds. You'll see that in through the pictures. I went with stainless over aluminum because the aluminum would dull and stainless, of course, never dulls. And so this is very similar boxes to the way I built the last ones. Again, it's just that I built three this time. Now this is the first time I go all out and I build a whole bed. The other one, the other truck I built, just the boxes. And I removed the headache rack from a standard skirted bed that you can buy, you know, CM bed or any type of flat bed. I just took the, the headache rack off and welded the boxes on it. These boxes are made out of 12 gauge material, one by two rectangle tubing. Uh, same thing all the way around there and not that hard to build you know if you're a decent fabricator you can build it it just looks fancier because of the because of the stainless a lot of folks go with elbows like these these are 10 inch uh, 10 inch 90 degree elbows that were welded together and have the arch cut out for them for the wheel works good this looks to be really thick it is not it's an angle iron facing outwards it's got a 3 16th top here up until this point right in here and it's 10 gauge that way so these sides I got to match the cab body lines of the cab I made a template out of poster board first and I transferred that over to a quarter inch plywood and I took it to the sheet metal place and they bent it up for me. These doors here, I had them water jet the opening for the door before they formed the panel itself. And I requested that they leave little tabs 
that attach these doors and then I would just cut through them with a cutoff wheel after I installed the hinges so that worked out really well um, again these uh, stainless is held up really well we've got scratches from tree limbs and miscellaneous things but you know it is what it is uh, not, not too bad you can polish it up if you want but it looks fine the crane I got that from my buddy Dan Root at QT Equipment up in Ohio. It's a 5,000 pound capacity crane. It works really well. My other truck had a 3,000 pound, a 3,200 pound crane. A little bit small. I overworked it, of course, but now I've got one that'll do almost anything. Uh, anything for a field mechanic. I don't, I don't take out engines. I don't do that type of work. So this will roll over buckets, uh, excavator buckets, and pick up augers and you know some heavy stuff 5,000 pounds is quite a bit this tower here I built out of a piece of pipe one inch plate here one inch plate here that's the only thing I didn't paint it's kind of crazy and actually it's not even painted this whole truck is powder coated I had all these uh, this is the first truck that I built from the ground up or the bed I should say and I figured well may as well make it last and last as long as I can so I had it powder coated. It was uh, very expensive, but it was definitely worth it. My initial plan was to have it painted to match the truck cab. But a lot of the shops that I took this bed to, I had it on a trailer, and they were afraid of it. They just like, they didn't want to touch it. It was just too big of a, a project, I guess. And so I didn't, I didn't, oh, I hope that train didn't get me. But uh, I didn't clean up the welds too much. You know, the grind marks and hammer marks, I figured would be covered with with bodywork and they weren't so if you look close enough you'll see all the scratches and uh, hammer marks from uh, from the bodywork that I was it was supposed to cover with, with you know standard paint and body type stuff uh, powder coat doesn't hide that so to start off I'll show you this bottom box here works out pretty well there's a my guide there for my track torch or my operator assisted uh, hand assisted torch <laughs> I even forget but carry some slings some chains and boxes these boxes I get from uh, the drillers uh, foundation drillers that's what they carry teeth and uh, auger pockets from and so I carry you know just straps and chains and miscellaneous things to try and stay tidy uh, same thing here just miscellaneous chains binders winch uh, this this is quite long. I think it's 54 inches, so I, I could make real good use of all that lower storage that you normally do not have on a regular pipe rig. So I wanted to make this very similar to a standard pipe rig because I really like those body lines and I like the way the fenders look on there, and it's really neat, uh, really cool looking. But of course, I'm not a pipeline guy, and so I'm not a mechanic. So it's a combination of the two. So next we have our oxygen acetylene this doesn't have an actual top because it doesn't really need it it's just a protection for my for my hoses I don't want anybody looking at my stuff um, standard acetylene bottle there got my oxygen laying down there uh, you'll see on the other side I carry another extra bottle of a small either mixed gas or small oxygen whatever I need at the time if in case I'm running a spool gun uh, aluminum spool gun or or something of that nature. Guess I can leave it open. This one here, it's not as organized as I was like. Uh, one of the surprising things about what I do is you would think I carry one of every kind of tool, but I really don't. I, I do, you know, my job is very specific. I don't turn too many wrenches. And so the customer knows that. And it's not that I can't, but it just costs more money for me to do it. And so they have their guys naturally that are paid less to do it. So they'll separate the machines, they'll take it apart. Any hoses or hydraulic things that are uh, in the way, uh, fortunately they take it all apart for me. And so I just show up, do my job and leave. So that's why I don't need to carry so many tools. My initial thought here was to have one of those slide out drawers that you, you know, custom make for this opening. But as soon as I started getting the truck to working, it was it was like, I got to get to work. <laughs> so I just didn't uh, follow through with that. But if you know anybody who's, who's good at building those, uh, let me know, because I'd like to get some there, uh, different drawers to pull out. Uh, similar things, similar up here. 
Uh, this one here is my main box. Again, nothing fancy. I made these hanging attachments for my torches. I knew exactly what torches I was going to use. And so I built all that before I made the, the bed, as I was building the bed, so that the powder coat would be on everything. Oh, this guy moved over. So, uh, welding hood, miscellaneous electrical tools, other miscellaneous hand tools, and hammers and things, uh, pipe wrenches, clamps, etc. Ex extensions, um, impact tools. Now, it may look like a lot of wasted space, and it is, like I say, I don't carry as many tools as you would think. But I like to see my tools as I'm working with them so that I know, I know which ones I took out. So I only carry an X amount of hammers, an X amount of screwdrivers, uh, so many clamps. And so that way <clears throat> I know what I'm missing as I'm putting it all back up. Now this guy here, this guy I made back in 1998 or so. This one has transferred over to all my trucks. Of course, this is the only time it's gotten powder coated, but this is where I keep my cables. Real simple. My ground is shorter than my positive or stinger side, but I made that oh man back in my 20s, so that's uh, that stuck with me for a really long time. So I had to have it, had to keep it. Uh, a lot of folks like those uh, reels. I used to have reels. I'll show you pictures of reels that I made at the time, and I just didn't like them. They just weren't for me, but you know to each his own and so here oh i didn't unlock that so i'll just keep talking for a second um this box over here i carry my famous red umbrellas everybody knows these <laughs> they uh they're very good umbrellas i carry three umbrellas <clears throat> the, the texas sun is really hot so the more shade you can make for yourself the longer you can work let me see if I got the right key here. Yeah, that one. Oh. And then this last key over here. Okay. So this one's got a mix of things. Uh, some, mostly my electrodes and my crane controller. There's the battery for it there at the bottom. And an on-off switch. I also carry my little table. My little table here. I don't like working off direct, directly off of my truck, <clears throat> so I use a table. This guy works really well. Let's see if I can carry it over here without dropping it. So there you go. It sits in those pockets. I didn't like the thought of initially making these rub rails, you know, like the standard flatbed, uh, but I needed them in this sense. That way I can work off of here. I'll clamp things on here. And I can just, uh, you know, start torching uh, right off this edge and work on this corner. So very handy, very very handy. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is my outriggers. My outriggers have a hole right here that I welded a socket, uh, sorry, a nut onto the end of the stem or that shaft that cranks it down. These have a drop pin. Drop it down as far as I can. I have a ratchet and. It starts cranking down works great another little pocket that i made here is this pocket right here and this little loop right here this little loop is what holds my umbrellas and it covers me right in this working area here i have it on both sides uh, this here one there one here my license plate uh, i don't have uh, reverse lights like normal but i do have motorcycle license plate lights they work out really well another thing i installed was this gooseneck uh, ball now the weight is way you know the trend or the real spot where it's supposed to go it's not in the right spot but i have so much forward weight that i can offset that and the purpose of that is just basically to get a trailer home if i need to i'm not going to be pulling anything with it really but uh, for necessity if i if i can i'll pull it home at least to get it uh, to the shop one thing i also did do was i added a standard electrical box with a gfi now this is set up basically as an extension it runs through the truck uh you know wrapped up in the truck frame and it plugs into the front of the machine just like an extension what else next box oh i, I hear 
Here's where I carry my art gouging stuff, my welding rods, miscellaneous things, jumper cable. Uh, this welding machine has the jumper cable, jump start ability, extension. My suitcase here, I leave it attached and I just hold it up. That way I don't have to keep taking it on and off and on and off. Uh, real handy that way. This box here is mostly for bringing stuff home. If I need to bring stuff home, uh, I can throw it in that box or I can ratchet it to the rails that are on back. But I keep my stands in there. I don't want people to look at my stuff. Although I'm showing you my stuff, which is kind of weird, but either way. So if you've seen the video that I just did <laughs> with this 50 ton jack, this is a big baby. Golly, that thing is heavy. So that one's pretty much an empty box. This one was also supposed to be one of those where I have uh, all the shelves of tools, but I didn't, I didn't finish it out. Now this, where my machine is at, it's a Miller Trailblazer 302 air pack. I've had this machine since 2013 and it works really well. I like to elevate it off the bed of the truck because that way you, you create yourself a lot of storage space underneath. And you know, you can throw a lot of things under there. You got pry bars and miscellaneous steel and you know, things of that nature that you know you would have lost space and that's partially why these doors are very tall as well i believe these are 44 inch tall uh doors 44 45 something like that they're 22 inches deep and they carry a lot of stuff i forget exactly how wide maybe 25 or 27 something of that nature so that's pretty much it let me see what else did i cover oh i got some uh, air suspension that i built I built some air suspension under here. I did it for my truck in, in the 90s. You can't really see, but I'll insert some pictures. And that works really well. I ordered it without the rear tank. And that's a 50 gallon rear tank. And I'm stuck with a midship tank, which is 22 gallons. However, I have to fill my machine up every two days or every two and a half days anyway. So it's pretty much the same thing. I just stop and get diesel for that. So that's not that big a deal. And so that pretty much does it. There's uh, nothing really fancy about this truck. It looks fancier in pictures than it really is, but you know, it does get it get its looks. Uh, 100 foot of hoses. Mm. This here, this I forgot to mention. This here is one by one, uh, 11 gauge square tube. I just welded it up in a frame. It's one by two, flat bar, and then just rivets. Just rivet it on there. Looks fancy. This aerial, this one you get from from uh, Northern Tool, I believe, and it pipes into the machine. It's, the air pack has a built-in air compressor, and it works really well. Spits out a lot of air, especially for gouging. Okay, so those are all the pros. <laughs> I guess I do have some cons. You know, everybody has pros and cons of when. Uh, when they build something like they thought about it afterwards like oh i should have done something, done something differently okay so the cons i should have built the ceiling surface of this a little better i should have made it to where it is sealed against these edges so that tends to leak uh, so i have water that gets in there but i drill holes and it, it dries out and i have a little elevator platform so that's one uh another of the cons is that I thought I would make a cooler torch bottle stand. I made this out of half inch. I just didn't like that. It didn't come out as good as I planned. So other than that, I mean, it holds under fine. It does great, but I would have done that differently. Now my fuel cups here, these tend to collect a lot of water. But what I did do is I, I attach some valve stems metal valve stems that you get buy for tires <clears throat> drill the hole and i use the valve stem took out the center core and i have a hose that runs out back underneath and it drains out through here and it works good however i should have made it bigger i should have used a bigger diameter because that's only like 3 16 and you know mud and dirt and leaves and things get in the way uh, what else that's pretty much it all the hardware you know you can you can buy it in your supply stores i ordered them from a place called austin hardware which is in dallas texas 
uh, spring uh, springs hold this in the right spot it works really well I guess uh, I w next time I would have bought the greasable uh, bearings or uh, greasable hinges sorry my other ones had greasable ones but since I knew I was gonna possibly powder coat this I didn't want the grease to affect the powder coating so I didn't do that and I've had a, a, at first I had a couple little issues where they got in a bind but now they freed up and everything's working great and this vice this is vice is from Bessie it's a great vice really heavy duty worked out really well and let me see uh, some people ask why I put the crane in the center <clears throat> I put the crane in the center because I didn't I didn't want to create my boxes lower on the one side I already have difficulty staying underneath some drive throughs at the uh, you know the fast food drive throughs and you know you got to think of all these things and so I'm right under nine feet so I fit under almost all the drive throughs and so that works out well now as far as having it in the center you would think I lose a lot of space and I do uh, but I'm not a mechanic right I don't I don't carry engines I don't carry anything else uh, if anything I can carry a big auger here about six or seven foot long one which is fine I just strap it to the truck but I knew that I wasn't gonna be carrying anything with this truck I just wanted it to look nicer for longer so uh, but I have carried a piece of three-quarter inch plate steel right in this opening I think a four by ten piece of three-quarter and I stood it up with the crane sat it in there and being that the bed is a 12 foot long bed it worked out well I have these tie down tie downs here that I did on the last truck also and they're very handy they hold things you know just to the truck you don't need to make them too crazy heavy let me see but that's about it I mean it's been a great truck I've enjoyed it uh, unfortunately these trucks are meant for commercial use which means that they're detuned so this thing's slower than the snail I can't even pass my own shadow but it does all right and being that it's manual transmission from what I understand they detune them also because of the possibility of breaking input shafts so I understand that I wish I'd known that beforehand uh, but it's been a great truck I enjoy it it's a big big truck so thank you guys for your support and I'll continue to you know show some pointers and tips here and there you know things that may be of use to you guys and I'll show some of the build picks I don't know if I'm gonna be doing this in in sections or all in one video but at least you got to see the truck so thanks again for watching let me go ahead and close this up and I really appreciate all all the support you've given me and if you got any comments I try and read all the comments so don't hesitate asking any questions yeah i try and answer all the comments to be able to help you guys and see if you know you guys have got any questions about material or rod selection that kind of thing but believe it or not it's getting dark the sun is going down and so that should do it um, all right well thank you very very much uh hopefully we'll have a another nice run for it uh, you know keep learning all of us keep learning so thanks for watching and we will catch you guys on the next one